Well, we've seen plenty of superhero movies this year, but comic fans will get to see a classic superhero make his big screen debut when Doctor Strange opens this fall. But did you know Doctor Strange also had his own TV movie back in the 70s? And here's another surprise, it wasn't made in Turkey. I kind of wish it was, though. That way we could see Doctor Strange go to a strip club after brutally murdering people to a bootleg Led Zeppelin soundtrack. Now you're probably thinking, isn't it a little early to be doing this? I mean, Doctor Strange doesn't even open until November. Well, yeah. I gotta do this one before everyone else on the internet does. <laughs> Doctor Strange is a 1978 TV movie aired on CBS that was intended as a pilot for a potential series. Marvel actually had quite a few of their characters on TV in the 70s. The best known is the Incredible Hulk series with Lou Ferrigno, but there was also the live-action Spider-Man series. And the two Captain America TV movies with Red Brown. How far we've come. Anyway, in 1978, Marvel decided to give Doctor Strange a shot with a TV movie to see if he could carry his own series. Now, as you saw, Marvel's TV stuff in the 70s tended to be on the goofy side, so how does this movie begin? <laughs> Okay, it begins like a friggin' Exorcist movie. Can't say I was expecting that. Seriously, just listen to this music. It sounds like something from The Shining. Jesus, this intro is almost making me afraid of the big bad wolf. And what's this? You mean hell is actually located in outer space? I can't believe all those Looney Tunes shorts lied to me. So right away, we're introduced to the movie's villain. Now, Doctor Strange may not have the most well-known rogues gallery in the world, but he does have some pretty weird and creative villains, so who'd they pick for this movie? Morgan, would it please you to be of service to me again? It would please me. The mom from Arrested Development. Interesting choice. Okay, Jessica Walters playing Morgan Le Fay, who actually is a Marvel Comics villain, but she's not exactly one of Doctor Strange's big enemies. That's like making a Spider-Man movie and using the spot. And according to IMDB, the Ray Harryhausen demon she's talking to is supposed to be the Nameless One? No, no, that's not what the Nameless One looks like. He's supposed to look like a demon getting fucked by another demon. He tells Morgan to kill Earth's Sorcerer Supreme before he can transfer his title to a successor. That shouldn't be too hard for her. She is used to dealing with magicians, after all. You will not fail in this, Morgan, or my punishment will be swift and terrible. I'll make you star in Going Ape. Ah, I see the porno funk is letting us know we're on 1970s Earth. Which is appropriate, considering in this movie, Doctor Strange is less Benedict Cumberbatch and more John Holmes. Before we meet him, though, we need to see the sorcerer who needs to pass on his title. Master? Well, that's reassuring. The protector of our dimension was taking a nap. John Mills plays the current sorcerer, Thomas Lindmer, and he tells his assistant Wong about Morgan by showing him some of his comic art submissions. Her name is Morgan Le Fay. The Enchantress. No, the Enchantress is a different Marvel villain. Get your facts straight, Linmer. Morgan was worshipped by a devil cult in the 15th century. And she hasn't aged. Nah, don't worry, that'll happen eventually. Okay, so the barriers between dimensions are breaking down, and if Morgan kills Linmer before he passes on his title, it'll plunge the world into darkness, and if the Gatekeeper meets the Keymaster, it'll summon Gozer. Gotcha. Anyway, time to meet our main character. Who was it? Anyone I know? Sarah, how could you say that? Lipstick on your cheek. Okay, considering he looks like Johnny Wad, be thankful it's just on his cheek. This is Dr. Stephen Strange, and hey, what do you know? His real name is the same as his superhero name. That's convenient. Strange is a cocky, arrogant womanizer, so... yeah, pretty much. We made a deal. I never agreed to it. I think it's fine for doctors and nurses to fall in love. Falling in love wasn't the question. It was making love. Oh. 
She's right to be careful. In his younger days, Strange was a bit of a sex addict. I, t I never get tired of what I do because I'm a sex fiend. Uh, I really enjoy what, I, what I'm doing. I'm very lusty. All right, enough of the John Holmes jokes. Let's see how Strange treats his patients. Give me a little something, Doc, won't you? I've got an extra bed. You can spend the night here and I'll give you a little something to help you sleep. How's that? I really enjoy what, I, what I'm doing. I'm very lusty. I guess I shouldn't be too surprised. After all, John Holmes did play Dr. Dennis Johnson in Nasty Nurses. Uh-oh. The creepy music is telling me something bad is about to happen. Holy shit, cabs! You can tell Morgan's evil because she gives this kid the stink eye. Seriously though, why does the music think this is an Omen movie? Okay, never mind. Apparently the music thinks Morgan's the Terminator. And is Morgan's only power awkwardly staring at people, which somehow also gives her orgasms? Good thing Linmer's there to stop her. You shall not pass me, Morgan. Yeah, Gandalf this guy ain't. And oh shit, Morgan has the power of film editing. Oh, and taking over people's minds or something. You miscalculated this time, old man. Well, there's the Sorcerer Supreme of Earth, killed by a ten-foot fall. Just kidding, he's alive. Bit of a sore hip, but it's nothing a little magic E.T. touch can't fix. What happened? My plan of letting Morgan throw me off a bridge didn't work so well. Meanwhile, it looks like the girl Morgan possessed is having some bad dreams. And I just want to say, so far this movie isn't as silly as I thought it was going to be. Is he dead? Okay, now it's getting kind of silly. Morgan causes her to have a nightmare about jogging, and it must have been intense because this somehow puts her in the hospital. Alright, what's wrong with you? Don't make me go to sleep. I'll die if I go to sleep again. My god, Morgan is really Freddy Krueger! Let's see if Steven can get a better diagnosis. The woman, she was there. She wouldn't let me back into my room. And you're afraid if you go to sleep again. I'll die. Hmm, very interesting. Uh, straight jacket, please! Even though she can't remember her name, supposedly this is Clea, Doctor Strange's lover from the comics, so... Sure, pretty close, I guess. And holy crap, Morgan's in the hospital! Dr. Christopher Quit staring at people, you creepy bitch! Why is Linmer sitting down to eat breakfast? The universe is in danger, man! Grab a Danish and get moving! Back at the hospital, Clea refuses to take her meds, which is understandable considering most Doctor Strange comics already look like they're on drugs. Nurse, I didn't prescribe any medication. It's standard procedure, Doctor. I'd assumed you'd signed for it. Well, you assumed wrong. You know, I gotta say, I was kind of expecting a little more Strange and a little less Doctor in this movie. Seriously, we're more than half an hour in, and so far this guy reminds me more of Dr. Ross than Dr. Strange. The only magic stuff we've seen so far has been from Linmer. Speaking of which, ever hear of a lock, pal? Linmer finally goes to talk to Steven, but I wouldn't trust Wong to take care of things while he's away. He doesn't seem like the most observant guy in the world. Also, this movie is cruel to animals. Linmer gets to the hospital and shows off some more of his powers, like the Jedi mind trick. You'll have to come back later. This is uh, an unusual situation. I have pertinent information about the girl. This is uh, an unusual situation. He has pertinent information about the girl. He also mentioned something about not needing to see his identification. Linmer shows off his drawing of Clea, which is still not accurate, damn it. Do you know her? I know of her. So, what, she's famous and you're hoping to get an autograph? What does that mean? Okay, time to ask Steven to be your replacement. Where have you seen me before? I had an odd sort of dream. This young woman was in it. Okay, Johnny Wad, that's far enough. So are you. I said that's enough! Linmer explains that Steven has a psychic bond with Clea, and I'm guessing it has something to do with his Super Bowl ring. And here's another perk of being Sorcerer Supreme. You get your own business card. I can't force you to do this, but if you choose it of your own free will, then come to my house. We're almost halfway through and you're still not a superhero yet. But he can't go yet. He's got to check on Clea. They gave me something to keep me awake. I don't think it's working. What the hell? NyQuil? Those maniacs! Strange is rightly upset with his boss. Hospitals are no place for patients to get rest. 
You gave her Thorazine, the one thing she was afraid of. You put her to sleep. She was a nuisance on the ward. And she had to go to sleep eventually, didn't she? You know, he's kind of got a point. What exactly was Steven's plan? Just keep her awake forever? And why is Clark Kent also at this hospital? This is a Marvel movie, damn it. Clea goes into a coma after falling asleep. And worse yet, it looks like Morgan's trying to possess Herbie the love bug. <laughs> Damn, hitting him with a kid on a bike didn't work. At least Steven seems to be on his way to becoming a superhero now. You're a very unusual man. Well, his name is Strange, after all. Linmer tells Steven that he knew his father and that he has powers he doesn't realize yet, so I guess he really is the Obi-Wan of this movie. The girl's life is in danger. If we're going to help her, we should do so quickly. I agree, we're almost an hour in and he still hasn't even put on his costume yet. Now what? I'm going to send you on a journey into the astral planes. Good idea. In fact, I think I'll go there too. Cleo's consciousness has gone on to the higher planes. She's lost. On the higher planes, certain beings exist which are not always friendly. Wait a second. So Clea's in a coma because she's lost in the astral plane, and now Steven has to go into the astral plane to rescue her, which is dangerous because there's demons there. Was James Wan a fan of this movie? When does it begin? Now. Oh man, I think he spiked my drink. And the astral plane looks kind of familiar. <laughs> Strange doesn't have to search very long since he finds Clea almost immediately. I'm glad we're finally getting some superhero stuff in this movie, I just kinda wish it wasn't the can you read my mind part from Superman. It's not long though before Strange is attacked by a demon, I think. It's a little hard to see. He could just be at a shitty rave. And do you know how he defeats the demon? In the name of Raya, scourge of demons, I command you be gone! Okay, I would make fun of the fact that he won just by saying some magic words, but that's kind of what he does in the comics, so I'll let it slide. Strange and Clea make it back to Earth via the 2001 ending, but why didn't Morgan try and stop him? You had the opportunity to slay him. Why have you spared him? I am still a woman. And the man attracted me. So basically, the reason Morgan didn't kill Steven is because... I'm a warning. I guess Morgan must have used her magic powers to see what was in Steven's pants. But the Nameless One then reveals Morgan's true appearance. Master! Wait, so Morgan is a sorceress who wears red that worships an evil deity who is really a withered old crone and not a beautiful young woman? Was George R.R. R. Martin a fan of this movie? Oh good, we're back to the hospital stuff again. Calling Dr. Howard, Dr. Fine, Dr. Howard. Unfortunately for Morgan, Strange has his eyes on Clea, who's practicing for her Color of Money audition. You discharge, you can go home. Yeah, I know. I've been waiting. For what? To see if you'd come. Oh, Steven, green light, bro! Green light! Steven walks Clea home before going to Linmer's place, but it looks like he's being spied on by Sabrina the Teenage Witch. And did he have to wear black? I have a hard enough time seeing in Linmer's place as it is. I don't know what you did to me last night. It doesn't matter. I don't want anything more to do with it. Ah, oh, come on, man. We're over an hour in, and you've done like five minutes of magic stuff. Thankfully, he brings some magic stuff in. Hello, kitty. Come on in, then, and get dry. Hmm, guy who looks like John Holmes with a wet pussy? Nope, can't think of any jokes here, so I'll just move on. And congratulations, Steven. You just let the villain in, you dummy. That was kind of creepy, actually. I will give Morgan this. Her powers are a lot more impressive than Acton's from Star Crash. Well, looks like he messed with the Wong Sorceress. <laughs> okay, okay, I deserve that one. I'm sorry. Linmer doesn't do much better, despite going full song remains the same on her ass. Oh dear, I really should have passed on my title sooner. I'm really quite bad at this. Oh my god, Linmer's really in trouble. Steven's gotta do something. Eh, you know what? On second thought, it can wait. 
Unfortunately, before Stephen can go on his date with Clea, he gets cock-blocked by Morgan. She won't be harmed if you come with me. You have my word, she won't be harmed. Yeah, Stephen, if you can't trust an evil witch that wants to plunge the world into darkness, who can you trust? She takes him to one of the sets from Krull and makes him a tempting offer. Look at me. Am I pleasing to you? Yeah, here's the thing, lady. I had pretty much a sure thing waiting for me at that apartment, so if you could just zap me back there, that'd be great. Although, if you're open to it, maybe we can try and talk Clea into having a three-way? Hmm? That sound like something you'd be into? And we got less than 20 minutes left, so might as well get Steven into his costume. Eh, Doctor Strange, Jafar, close enough. Why do you draw away? The touch of your lips is cold. If that's a veiled criticism about me, I won't hear it, and I won't respond to it. That's right, Morgan. You can tempt me all you want, but I'll never join you. Okay, I will. All right, time for Steven to get some strange. But first... Take off the ring. The ring. Fun fact, Morgan, it also doubles as a cock ring. When Steven refuses to take off the ring, Morgan brings him to Linmer, who now looks like an extra from the Thriller video. Take off the ring and throw it into the web. Don't defy me, Stephen, or I'll take my pleasure from you in another way. <laughs> oh no, it's the woods from Evil Dead. If this is going where I think it is, you should have just slept with Morgan, dude. <laughs> Witch! He actually wanted to call her something else, but, you know, 70s television. And when Linmer talked about his latent powers, what he really meant is the movie's animator had 20 bucks riding on him winning the final battle. Well, looks like you failed, Morgan. The nameless one is so pissed off, he turns her into that one guy from the Masters of the Universe movie. And we got less than 10 minutes left. Transfer your damn title already, Linmer. These robes Morgan gave them to me. They were too. We did use them in the movie's publicity photos, after all. And so, after the ceremonial copping of a feel, the transfer of power begins. Stephen Strange, do you accept the guardianship of the light? I do accept it. Then let the transmutation begin. Congratulations, Stephen. You're now Dr. Mordred. Ooh, hey, that's one I can do when the movie actually comes out. Okay, time to take Linmer to his room. It is way past his bedtime. Hey, Clea, sorry I missed our date last night. I almost slept with another woman, but then I didn't. No, I still can't remember anything. Is that bad? Well, not necessarily bad. The mind heals itself pretty much like the body does. When you're ready to remember, you will. Or you could have permanent brain damage. I'm not really sure. Well, looks like everything worked out fine. Or did it? We're here interviewing the founder of the LeFay Method. Can you tell us just what it is exactly that the method does? Quite simply, it unlocks the hidden potential within you. Okay, so Morgan's a self-help guru now? All right, well, it's better than being an evil sorceress, I guess. Of course, it's really dumb. Nah, I didn't think it was that bad, actually. I'm serious, after seeing some of Marvel's other 70s TV stuff, I was expecting this to be a total cheese fest, but that's really not the case. I mean, sure, it's definitely dated and there are some silly moments, but overall, this is a lot more serious and respectful than most superhero TV shows at the time. Doctor Strange had poor ratings, mainly because it aired at the same time as Roots, and as a result, it wasn't picked up as a series. Which is a shame, since with a few changes, this might have made for a decent show. The biggest problem with this TV movie is that it takes too long to get going. Steven doesn't really become Doctor Strange until the last 20 minutes, and a lot of it feels more like a medical drama than a superhero show. This was probably to save money since a 70s TV show wouldn't have had the budget for a lot of magic stuff. But like I said, I would have liked more Strange and less Doctor. Still, this is a lot more atmospheric than most other superhero shows from the time, and Stan Lee's even on record as saying it's his favorite of Marvel's 70s TV stuff. Also, at the time of this video, this movie's never gotten an official DVD release, and I don't really know why. They've got a perfect opportunity with the new movie coming out. Ah oh, well, I guess I'll just have to add this one to the pile of movies that never made it past VHS. Well, that's all for now. Until next- What the hell? Uh, excuse me for a second, will you? Oh my god. He's back!
Is he dead? <laughs>